You're joining me at the start of my second filming session within my Jamaican rabbit hole. Probably the whole month of September 2023. I've already fil filmed the Appletons, the 8 and the 12. I've filmed the Zymaka and the uh, the five-year-old company, the Indies. I'm on a mission to find my favourite Jamaican neat sipping rum. Under £50, 60 US dollars, uh, 60 euros, give or take. But also, I want to find if we can make a one rum Mai Tai using a Jamaican rum. To go back in time, the original Mai Tai, the 1944 Mai Tai, was Ray Nephew, 17-year-old. It was one Jamaican rum. I want to find my favourite as we go through this journey. At the moment, it is the Zymaka. But for neat sipping, I really do love that company, the Indies. So I've just had a little refresher. Now I'm going to go into these two. Worthy Park Rums. I, I wasn't going to bother with the rum bar, but then I thought, actually, do you know what? Both of these come out of Worthy Park. I might as well just do the rum bar in this video, just to compare the two, because you would kind of call the single estate kind of like the upgrade to rum bar. Now, just as I pull these out, let's do the sort of price comparisons we've got here. So we've got the Worthy uh, Park single estate, and this is at £46 uh, in the UK from my guys at Master of Malt. Uh, and that translates, so I'm going to round up, look, translates to $59 uh, US dollars and 54 euros. Okay, so to compare that to the Zymaka, we're looking at roughly £10 extra. Um, what's that in dollars? We are $15, give or take extra, and €14. Euros. So we've got a healthy... And kind of jump up in price if you like, but then you would expect it because the rums in this, I think, are six a blend of six to ten year old rums. Um, but they are obviously all pot still, like the Zymaka, and unlike I, I think uh, the company the Indies. But then we go sort of polar opposites with the, the rum bar, but I don't want to call it an entry rum because or at their entry level because it is a, a cracking rum. I guess you would kind of put it in the same vein as. Appleton Signature as Mount Gay Eclipse, you know, those kind of real entry points from the big brands. This is essentially Worthy Park's entry point to Jamaican rum. But price point, this has actually shot up in price in, in sort of the last sort of few months. Uh, this is definitely not the price I paid, but £26.50 in the UK from Master of Malt, which translates to rounding up €34.31. Euro. So Again, where are we? 20, 26, with nearly 20 pounds cheaper. Nearly 20 pounds cheaper, which is what, 30, uh, 25 dollars cheaper. Um, and 20, where are we? 24 dollars cheaper. So, you know, it's quite, it's quite, if, if it's a decent rum and it is a decent rum, you know, it's a little bit of a bargain. But how does it really stand up against all these rums? So, off the, off the nose, off the nostrils, this is just purely the rum bar gold. Funk levels, I'm just going to call it that for the moment. Funk levels, I would put it uh, a fair bit higher than the company, the Indies. Do remember, I didn't get that much off there. I got a bit, I got more than the Appletons, but I didn't get as much as what the Zyn Macca did, if you know what I mean. So on that, the funk levels are there. I would say the Zyn Macca is possibly a little bit more, well, let's just say pungent. I should say pungent. I would say the Zyn Macca is just a little bit more pungent in sort of Jamaican notes but not, not that much. I think, you know, it's margins. It's really margin. But then to take a deep dive, yes, I get that sort of gluey, solvent-y kind of vibe off it, but it's not, you know, it's not massive there. What actually overshadows it is that fruit nose. I do get a lot of banana. I do get a lot of tropical fruit. There's also healthy hints of kind of that caramel, that barrel aging, the woody notes, if you like. So let's go down that sort of vibe, you know, how it's been aged. I think it's a four year old if I remember rightly I think it's four years in a barrel so you do get those vanilla notes you do get a little bit of caramel notes you do get that sort of barrel aging that woody vibe but if I'm being brutally honest I don't think I've got the the sort of the volume the the robustness that I do off the Zymaka I think the Zymaka sort of punches on the nose a lot a lot heavier if you like basically what I'm trying to say is I think the rum, rum bar gold it's kind of a lighter style of rum, even though it's got that sort of funky, pungent element to it. But to do the complete comparison, I know I think it's got more to it than actually the Compagnie de Indies. I think it's a heavier rum than that. Now, just to bring the sort of worthy park into this, uh, the single the single estate, I keep wanting to call it reserve. What's it called? Single estate reserve. I keep wanting to call it worthy park reserve for some reason, but single estate reserve. To bring this into the equation, 
much more fruit up top uh banana way 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 more banana than what's on that that's i mean that's just it's not overly funky it's not what i'm expecting to get off hamden for instance or smith and cross but it's got quite a bit of pungent sort of funky vibe to it but again i do get those tropical notes those tropical fruit notes again because you've got blends that have been in a barrel like six to ten years you do get healthy kind of wood the barrel aging so that brings out this those vanilla and caramel notes again you get all that if i was going to compare these side by side i would say they are very similar in profile I would say the worthy part, as you'd expect, gives you more barrel aging kind of the vibe on the nose. But actually, they're very similar in profile. They're not punching out kind of in the sweetness. It's kind of, if you take the sweetness out, they don't really take, you know, they don't really smell sweet in that sense. They smell fruity, but they don't smell spicy or like heavily wood, wooden, or heavily aged, I should say. They just smell like lovely intermediate funky pungent jamaican rums so on the taste your rum bar gold i would comparing it to those i would put it thinner that's the best way i can describe it lighter it's a 40 percent abv but so you, you do what that brings is that very first mouthful it's very soft it's very light as it washes washes over your tongue you do get that sort of peppery alcohol wood but you know barrel aging spice but then the finish is very fruity um kind of banana kind of pineapple-y kind of even like hints of coconut coming on the finish there. i'd say it's got a similar honey vibe to what i get off that company the indies but i would say that's more refined in that sort of sense i'd say that just kind of that's a more lovely sort of rounded rum whereas this it's a little bit in the nicest possible way it's a little bit rough around the edges and the second and third tastings i think what i'd kind of give you after that it's almost got like even though it's still light it's almost got like a creamy vibe going on i almost want to say i get apples off it as well i think i think it's a very funk level i haven't really described that i do get i, I can't don't think i have i, I do get a little bit of an estuary vibe but i don't get basically i don't get zomaka i don't get that pungent kind of funky aroma a funky sort of taste that i would do off that the, the glue the solvents the banana esters i don't really get that it's there a little bit it's just a lovely i would put this more in tune with appleton eight than i kind of would with that zomaka with those sort of funky notes not really much else i can give you on that quality mix and rum i haven't got particularly high hopes for that in a Mai Tai. I don't think there's enough on it to sort of punch through, but we shall find out. Uh, let's dive into um, the, the Worthy Park single estate instantly. Within seconds of it hitting your mouth, within milliseconds, way, way more refined, way more barrel aged, way more wood up front. It is that wood up front. It kind of makes it a thicker, more unctuous rum. I like that word. I haven't bought, used that word for a while. Kind of, what's the word? I wouldn't say creamy up, but just kind of gives you, bearing in mind, there's no dosage, but it just gives, gives you this more robustness of a rum. And it's interesting, the journey of that, because as it, as the sort of mid palate in that is quite feisty. It's 45% ABV, 90 proof. You have to remember, it's, it's stronger. We're going up, at, you know, against the Appletons, against those two. We're going up. Comparing that to that, that's pretty much like water. It's not, you, but you, you kind of understand what I'm saying. You know, the, it, that 5% ABV does make a dramatic difference to this. But as, as I was saying, the journey, the mid palate is definitely kind of wood and burn and spice, but the finish finishes out. I wouldn't say it's exceptionally long finish, but it does finish out into those tropical fruits there's a little bit of banana there. there's a little bit of sort of pineapple i'd say there's also quite a healthy kind of glug of vanilla at the end there i think that's probably what kind of you're thinking makes it sweet i definitely wouldn't call this a sweeter rum but you've kind of got that finish where that vanilla sort of rounds everything off and kind of does give you the impression it has got a that's where i got the word unctuous from if you like it's that vanilla that kind of tricks your mind into thinking it's sweeter it's not it's just 
I would call this a very rounded run. To put this in a category, I again, I'm expecting this. We're going to do it in, in literally like in a minute. I don't expect this to be fantastic in a Mai Tai, like a, an all-star. I expect it to make a great Mai Tai. But again, it's just not got that funky element that I fell in love with with the Zymaka. Again, if I was putting, again, we, I know we're going up in ABV, but I think the Smith & Cross that's coming out, for example, as well, I would think would outperform that in the Mai Tai. But that is a sipping rum is absolutely delicious. Um, again, very, it's a sipping, it's a neat sipper. I would probably still prefer the company the Indies, simply because it is a lighter for me. But to caveat that, for those that really do love barrel aging and wood, I would... That is a very tough call between that and Appleton 12 for your old, for you kind of, you know, your, the, those of you that love your whiskies as well, that come over from Whiskey World, those of you that lo love longer aged rums, I would say that's a very, very tough call between that and Appleton 12. But for me, personally, still was a neat sipper. I'm going there. Mai Tai time. Let's see how these perform. Now, any excuse to drink and make a Mai Tai to refresh my palate, this is the uh, the Mai Tai that I made in that pro that first video to start the series off. It is a 45 mil uh, Zymaco 15 mil plantation OFTD as kind of what I would just make at home. I'm not saying it's the best Mai Tai, it's just what I would naturally make here in the studio. So to go back as well, just so I've got that fresh in my head, I've also made uh, the Zymaco because out of the first four rums, the Zymaco was that Mai Tai rum. As I said, Still, for me, I love what the Plantation OFTD brings to the party, but as a one-run Mai Tai, that is still where it's at. This is absolutely delicious. You should have had that with the straw. Now, how does the Worthy Park Single Estate and the Rum Bar Gold perform? They are both lovely Mai Tais. There is absolutely nothing wrong with them. Again, as I'd said with like the, the Appletons, you know, there is nothing wrong with them. Same as the Compagnie de Indies. They are great tasting cocktails. If you use any of those rums to make a Mai Tai, a single one rum Mai Tai, they are great cocktails. Does it take the Mai Tai to the next level? No. Uh, the rum bar, not even remotely close. It is it's too thin. The, the ABV is not there for a start. Yes, you could use more rum, but the, the character of the rum is still not going to come through in that cocktail. It is tasty. It's lovely. It's an afternoon sort of sipping drink. But, you know, it's it's almost like a, more of a kind of an almondy orange daiquiri, if you like. That's the vibe, that's the lightness vibe that it gives me. It just doesn't, you know, it just doesn't even come close to this. That's that's fantastic. So the rum bar, gold has gone. You know, would I, would I restock that now? At that price, probably not, to be honest. Now that I know that what, you know, is only a few, it used to, when I, I swear when I got this bottle, it was literally just a couple of pounds over 20. It might have been like 22 pounds, 21, 22 pounds, something like that. To see it now at 26 pounds 50, that's quite a healthy jump. So I potentially wouldn't restock that now. I do think I would rather pay the extra bump in money and have either of those two, if you like. But where do we come with the Worthy Park Single Estate? It is lovely. I would possibly put that in second place at the moment. It it does give me the body. It does give me the the alcohol sort of punch. You know, you just do a 60 mil. Well, right, that's not 60 mil. They're half my ties. But it just doesn't deliver on that pungent, pungentness. Remember that word, that key word. Ray Nephew, 17-year-old, the original, brought pungent. Uh, that pungent taste, that pungent aroma to the Mai Tai. Now, that is what I get off that. That's delicious. I think we can still do better, and I'm looking forward to the more the, the stronger rums that are coming, but the Worthy Park just doesn't match up to that. So cracking Mai Tai, if you're, how to sum that rum up, if you are, as, as I've already said, if you are a neat sipper that loves your longer aged, that is potentially your pick out of the rum so far. It'd be close between that and the uh, Appleton 12, definitely. Uh, but for me, I still have to go for that for 
cocktails and neat sipping. I do like that, but still that. I still really enjoy that for neat sipping.